out on a happy face. This week I prepared for you work with two materials that go together very well. It's watercolor and colored pencils. Uh, normal colored pencils, you don't need watercolor um, pencils. Uh, and we're looking at creating very simple but 3D bubbles uh, with different colors representing different parts of happiness in your life, what brings happiness to your life. And then we can create uh, linkages between them. So it's very much about color working with two art materials but then having that reflective part as well um and i hope you like it it's very simple technique once you learn it you can use it for uh different paintings and it's quite often used in botanical art as well so have fun and i start looking forward to see what you create bye bye okay let's get started so preferably if you have watercolor or mixed media paper is the best and we're going to be working on different colors bubbles and i show you how to work in layers with watercolor and then on top of that we'll be using for more definition colored pencil it's a great combination watercolor and colored pencil used quite often in botanical art uh, but we're just going to use it to create some different colors of happy bubbles um, and then we can map them up um, we can create like a map of our happy bubbles so let's go with that so we're going to start with wet um brush so wet on wet so clean water and i start with my first bubble they're just drawing with water a circle shape now i'm gonna go for um one single color i'm gonna go for blue of watercolor with the wet brush and start with one edge so this is about imagining that this is where you're starting is where there the, 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 it's a dark side and the light is hitting from opposite direction. So when you start clean your brush at that point and it's about dragging this color into the lighter area. Still, you know, being on a cleaning brush again, thinking about being in that area where you apply the water. See, I'm still dragging this color. And if it gets too dark, use a paper towel and you can lift some color. Okay, so I'm still just with wet brush now dragging this color. And then also I'm going to decide this one, this area here, it's going to be the highlight, so I'm not putting any color there. So now it's very much about going back with this color. So it's still pretty wet, so I'm going to do another layer, just from that edge when it's dark, with the same color, but look how much darker this is now. And I'm just again moving this color towards the middle. Okay, so now I can see this is this is too dark when it comes. I want it very dark on this side, but I don't want it so dark here. I need more transition. So I'm cleaning my brush and just pushing this color to mix with more water. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm going to even push it a bit more direction. I'm keeping my highlight. Okay, and I leave that because I want it dry, then I go with the third layer. So we're going to be working layers with watercolor. Let me create another one here quickly so you get familiar with the process. Just different color.
case. So this is exactly the same process, just different color. Always starting from one side and dragging this color and mixing with water so it becomes a lighter layer. Okay, so I'm going to let those dry, maybe create a few more so you can see, and we'll be going with a last final layer of watercolour, but this needs to be dry first. Okay, so I have that dry, fully dry, and it's a repetition of the process, but this time not making it wet, just going on top of um, your painting with the same colour. Let me just get that. And now it's going to give it much more definition because it's going to be sitting on a top of dry paint. So this is working in layers. But then you can, of course, you know, your brush, your brush again, it's going to be working with mixing that with water. It's just when you start, you don't water your, you don't um, wet your paper because the paint is already there. Okay, so hopefully you can see how lovely this is building the layers and how this blue is becoming really strong. And I'm just repeating the process. So I'm making it lighter as I move towards where the light would be hitting the bubble or the ball. Okay. And even going to go again with my paint just to the very, very edge and make it really dark so this one is a bit too far too much I'm going to lift that color you know this is about playing with your layers you already put here and I'm going to do the same for all of them so it's just the last layer the third layer goes on dry painting and I'm going to do the same for the rest of them dry it again and we're going to be working with colored pencils on top of that that's where the fun begins okay so the bubbles are fully dry and we're going to be working with colored pencils on top of that. So this is again to um, give this another layer with more definition, more uh, vibrancy of color. It's a great technique. So for each bubble, pick up colored pencils corresponding with the color. It could be just one pencil. I happen to have a bit more. Um, if you are able, find some lighter and darker of each variations of each color. Or sometimes even like here, I could play a bit with the purple because that blue could take purple quite well. And what you're doing, it's basically repeating the process, but just kind of seeing where you can apply that what, uh, that pe colored pencil. So it allows you to give this um, painting um, another layer that will bring in to even more three-dimensional um, impression. So I started here with this. You don't have to fold the, uh, the, the cover, the bubble fully. It's really about just playing and seeing what works. Especially the light areas, you want to keep some of them um, light. So here I'm going with the purple on top of a little um, top of a blue um, colored pencil. It's more bluish, bluish purple. I 
having this light blue as well. And overlap, overlap your colored pencils, overlap the transitions. So you can see with this light one, I'm going into those darker areas as well. And it's all about also the pressure you give to the pencil. Of course, the more pressure, the darker line and coverage you get. I go quite lightly here. Yeah. And play well, play with those uh, shapes. Remember about maintaining your highlight pretty light or even white. So this is this area here for me, because that will gives you that that will give you this 3D effect that the light is hitting certain area, and then it's getting darker as you move away from the light. Okay, so I hope that gives you impression. And you know, this is like back and forth. You, you can come back with colors and it's just never ending really. So let me start <coughs> on the pink one. This color is too light. That's how I feel about it. Let me see if I have anything. Mm. It may be sometimes hard to find the color you want, so you may want to leave watercolor and then just. Could be better. That's better. Concentrate on middle tones. And as you, you know, work with them, maintain some of like this feature, you know, where watercolor blended. I just want to keep it. I think it's really pretty. Um, keep them um, the way you want it. Work on them the way you want it. But just have a play. How colored pencil works on top of watercolor is really great technique. And the last stage is to um, look at them. And we can do again, go back to our reflective kind of approach with art which is very good for your well-being um, when you have them all done use a black uh, pen or maybe pencil and i would like to indicate each bubble something that makes you happy in your life you can write in the middle of it you can write around it so you know if i had here like a, a dog and cat for example they're a big part of my life You can write inside the bubble. Um, and then I would like you to have, you know, different bubbles with different things that are important to you and make you happy in your life. And later on, you can even create linkages between them with those lines um, because certain things, you know, fit one into another. So if I like cat and dog and I also nature is important to me. Those things do go together, you know, taking dogs for walk, my dog for a walk or just being outdoors with, with the pet. So you can create different lines across the bubble. So you're going to have your map of happiness when you finish with different bubbles, um, different colors and different aspects of your life that are important. to you. And you can do those lines, you can do the arrows, you know, this is really up to you. There are many different ways. You can do little circles. I'll leave it to you because I do know you're very creative and that will be really um, fascinating for me to watch what you're going to come up with. You can also remember right inside the bubble. So have fun. Let me know how that um, worked for you and just define your bubbles of happiness. And take care and I'll see you next week.
Thank you.